Astronauts John Young and Robert Crippen are spending their final hours before blastoff, resting and practicing emergency landings. The pioneer launch of America's space shuttle Columbia is targeted for tomorrow at 6.50 a.m. from Cape Canaveral. In tonight's close-up report, Herb Clark examines the shuttle, its economic impact, and what it means for our future in space. If all goes according to plan, tomorrow morning the space shuttle Columbia will blast off from Cape Canaveral and launch a new era in our conquest of space. The shuttle has been 10 years in the planning, been plagued by cost overruns and problems with its complicated systems, and the launch itself is three years behind schedule. But if it works, experts agree its giant cargo carrying capacity will open the way for the commercial development of space. That's a $9 billion truck, but uh, if you count the number of satellites that we have put into orbit and the useful spin-offs we're getting from those satellites, just think of what we can do in the future. The shuttle is the most complicated spacecraft ever made. Here's how it works. The shuttle itself is attached to a giant fuel tank and two booster rockets. Engine start. When all rockets are fired, the four and a half million pound unit will almost leap off the launch pad, reaching 75 miles an hour in just six seconds. Two minutes later, the boosters will burn out and drop into the Atlantic Ocean to be recovered and used again. The shuttle's main engines will continue to fire for another six and a half minutes. By then, the fuel tank will be empty. It will break loose and drop into the Indian Ocean, not to be recovered. The shuttle will go on into orbit for two days. The cargo doors will be opened and tested. Then 54 and a half hours later, Sunday afternoon, it will turn for a tail-first return to Earth. Its rockets will be fired to slow it down for what may be the trickiest part of the whole trip, the return through Earth's atmosphere. The underside of the shuttle will glow cherry red from the heat of re-entry, and a failure of the complex heat shield could destroy the ship. Finally, the Columbia will come into a steep glide as it approaches the landing field in California to make a powerless landing on a three-mile-long airstrip. Its maiden flight will be a test of a host of new space age systems. The shuttle is right on the cutting edge of technology. Where it's one of these borderline uh, technological situations. In principle, it works. Despite the risks, the pilots of the Columbia and the teams of space engineers are confident. Mission Commander John Young is a 50-year-old veteran astronaut with four flights behind him. He was on the moon in 1972 when the shuttle project was approved. Like a good time for some good news here. The House yeah. passed uh, a space budget yesterday, 277 to 60, which includes the vote for the shuttle. 43-year-old Robert Crippen will pilot the Columbia. It'll be his first space flight, over, although he's been an astronaut for 11 years. But he's had plenty of practice during the three years of delays of the shuttle launch date, practicing in simulators while aerospace engineers work the bugs out of the Columbia. Start. Four. Engine start. The first major delay was in the development of the giant engines that power the shuttle. During the initial firing, one of the three main engines caught fire. Engineers scrambled to stop the test. Where at? Low at you. Oh, it's two chill umbilical. All right, LH2 T0 umbilical. Uh, deluge water on, Jim. John, it looks okay from the bunker. I don't okay. see fire. I the problems were eventually corrected. And after a final test in February, the engines are considered ready to go. But there's still concern about the shuttle's heat shield. Over 30,000 heat-dissipating tiles cover areas of the shuttle which will be exposed to temperatures of up to 2,300 degrees. Each tile is different, computer-coded to fit exactly on the shuttle's contours. And the loss of only a few could cause the entire shuttle to burn up during re-entry. Well, John Young, my, my cohort, says that uh, if you aren't a little bit nervous, then you don't understand what's happening. But uh, in general, I don't think it's fear. I think it's mainly a concern of trying to make sure that you can, you're prepared to handle anything that you can imagine that might happen to you and a few things that you can't imagine. 
The shuttle's problems helped push the cost of the project over $9 billion, nearly double the original estimate. But if the shuttle does all it's designed to do, its backers say it will create thousands of new jobs and provide a major boost for the economy. Since our earliest involvement in the space program back in the late 1950s, Philadelphia's economy has been closely tied to the space effort. A lot of jobs may be hinging on the space shuttle flight. General Electric Space Division plant in King of Prussia is only one of many companies in the area involved in the space program. They've built many of the satellites already in orbit. And those satellites affect all of our lives, improving communications like long-distance phone calls and television transmission. They also map our Earth, help us plan food crops and forests, and even help predict the weather. GE has also been very much involved with the space shuttle projects, and they're already working on units that will someday be carried to space on the shuttle. We are currently building communications spacecraft that ultimately will be carried into space by the shuttle. And we expect that as the space program evolves, we will be building additional payloads that will take advantage of the capabilities of the shuttle to place them in space. After all these years and research and planning, do you have any doubt that the space shuttle will succeed? We have done similar things in the past. I think this country knows how to manage and conduct enterprises of this nature. And I have confidence that this vehicle will fly and perform as we expect it to. The shuttle is also expected to open up a whole new era of space industry. There is an opportunity for a tremendous amount of just private capital development in space. Satellites don't have to cost a great deal of money. As the launch costs go down, a wide variety of investors can be put together to go in on a profit-making business. Futuristic space projects are already on the drawing board. Things like giant manufacturing centers to mine the minerals of the asteroid belt and to create new space alloys. There are also plans for huge solar energy stations, which would be able to beam back power to Earth. There are even designs for giant orbiting space colonies with farms inside to grow food for the people living out there. Speculation on the development of a large habitat, perhaps containing as much as 10,000 people, is real. Uh, these are projections made on known technology and our ability to do things as it exists today. And it looks like the shuttle is reviving the old fascination with space. A million people are expected to be at Cape Canaveral to watch the launch tomorrow morning. The best vantage points are long since filled up. It may prove that for many people, the prospects of space still can spark the imagination. And now comes cross your fingers, hold your breath, say a prayer time. Lift off is set for 10 to 7 tomorrow morning. And all that money and planning and testing come down to a critical few minutes. One tiny mistake could wipe out the project. But if all goes well, you can mark the date. It's the date we built the first solid step on the staircase into space. Deborah? You're going to get up and watch it? I surely will. Oh, I am too. Okay. It's figured to reach up to one million before they light the tail on the space shuttle tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow, the Columbia, or for now that is, the Columbia just sits there under the Cape Canaveral sky while officials and technicians go over and over their checklists. You know, the astronauts wrap up their training and head for some sack time. The media people calmly go about trampling each other. And the tourists pack into every space within 30 miles of the bird to get a personal look at what took nine and a half billion tax dollars to put together. Just before seven o'clock uh, tomorrow morning, the window opens. John Young and Bob Crippen, along with several thousand NASA workers, aim to take the Columbia through. Assuming the shuttle does lift off on schedule tomorrow, you can see the launch live right here on Channel 6. Uh, you can probably see it in your sink. It's gonna be broadcast everywhere on everything tomorrow morning. ABC's coverage will begin at 6 a.m. Millions of people will see the blast off on TV. And as I found out the other day, uh, the Space uh, Center down there in Cape Canaveral, Florida, uh, will be host to thousands more who will watch the whole thing in person. Uh, people will be there, and a lot of animals, too. The entire Kennedy Space Center is smack in the middle of a wildlife refuge. And as we understand it, wildlife officials weren't too thrilled recently when an Air Force Titan rocket started a fire which pretty well charred this area. 55,000 people are expected to converge on the Space Center near Cape Canaveral for tomorrow's launch. But to make sure none of the tourists ends up flash fried like this, uh, they'll be kept at a safe distance. This is just one of the sites about five miles away from the launch pad where thousands of people will gather to watch the Space Shuttle Columbia begin its voyage into space. And